Well, good day to you. It is October the 17th, and I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you are. My name is Gary Willing. I want to welcome you to Search for Signs if you are new, and welcome you back if you have been here before. Now, if you want to know more about Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom, you want to know why they're coming back now, why is it important that the teacher and these masters are coming back at this particular time, and maybe even what it means for you, you know, or if you want to see if there's anything to this or any truth to this for yourself. I've included links in the description portion of these videos that take you to websites that I think give you really good background information to start your investigation in some way. So they're there for you if you want. Now, I want to thank some people who commented and encourage you, if you haven't done it already, to post your comment in the comment section. I'm going to call out somebody, Alex Dubois. Um, post your relevant question in the uh, comment section as well. I thought that was self-explanatory, but I guess I got to explain it to some people. <laughs> or you can email me at searchforsignsatmail.com. But I do want to thank Maitreya um, that commented, uh, Alex Dubois, Lenny and Colora, Zach Laney, Timothy Tilton, Thomas Lynch, and Kim Anderson. I think that's everybody who's commented or sent me emails since the last video. I really do appreciate it. Let's get on into it because I got a lot of questions to cover. All right. Um, I'll start with uh, Kim Anderson since she's new. Hi, not sure if you'll get this message. I did get this message, but I'll have to email you back directly because I don't know if you're going to listen to this uh, video or not. I subscribed a while back and I haven't really looked into what your platform is. You caught my eyes with my tray and recently the Masters. Just a question before I start watching the videos you have made. Have you ever read the books through the eyes of the Masters? No, I have not. I take my reading, listening, and learning seriously, and you have a nice YouTube channel. I want to start from your earliest videos on. I've watched part of only two videos in the past. Also, thank you for the videos. It seems you are also serious about what you are doing. Thank you. I am serious, but I try not to take myself too seriously, and there is a distinction. <laughs> you know, I, I just see myself as an ordinary person with extraordinary information to talk about, and that's it. And the reason why I say it's information and not some enlightened truth is because it is just that, information. Information for you to look at. Information for hopefully you to think about. Information for everyone to kind of see if there's any truth to it for yourself. And in, in, in that way, you can feel free to decide for yourself if there's anything to this. That's why I always encourage you to investigate this information for yourself. Um, but thank you very much for that. But I will, I'll just say this real quick about reading the book uh, Through the Eyes of the Masters. I've read books like this. <clears throat> I'm not saying this is on par with that, but basically the information that I am pulling from to try to answer these questions and talk about uh, is coming from mainly from Benjamin Krem, but also from his own master when I read his articles. Um, and you can read them too, so I'm not getting these this information directly from him or anything like that. So I'm just reading these articles uh, from the book um, A Master Speaks, which are published works by him. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alice Bailey, uh, Krishnamurti, somewhat the, the Helena Bavatsky, but not as much as the others. And then the Bible, of course. And then I, some of the things that Maitreya has taught me personally, I guess. But that's basically it. So, and, it, and it's not that I don't like reading those type of books. I mainly focus my own learning and reading and studying on politics. That's my passion. I'm an amateur political pundit. <laughs> But the other thing, too, I want to say <clears throat> is, and this comes from knowing Benjamin Krem for as long as I did. I didn't know him as well as a lot of people, but I knew him pretty well. And he kicked my ass from time to time verbally. Not, not literally. He was smaller than me. <laughs> but, you know, but verbally, he, definitely, he would definitely kick my butt. And there were some things that he said to me over the years that did not make me feel very good about myself at the time. At the time. The farther I get away from it, the more I look back on it, the more I realize what he was doing. And he was teaching me to, for one thing, when I was trying to impress him, okay, and I would say something to him, he would really just lay into me. And then the other times that I wasn't trying to impress him, I didn't. So I started to see that my intention was very important in terms of how I approached my questions to him. I, unfortunately, I didn't see it at the time. But the other thing that he would do, 
and he didn't, not only for me, but for other people, is, is when people would ask him questions about this author or that author, he could sometimes be pretty brutal about them. You know, and it wasn't that he was jealous or he was trying to keep people from learning other information. It was just the majority of the information that is written about these masters is not coming from the masters. It's coming from the astral uh, emotional planes, which are planes of existence that most of us are focused on. We live in the physical plane uh, universe, but our focus in the world, uh, the way that we see the world is astral emotional. It's why we're the masters. We consider the majority of people to be what are called astrally polarized. One of the masters, the master DK, said the greatest service that any one of us can do is to get out of the astral plane and focus on the mental plane by keeping your attention at the Ajna center. So, because when you do, you pull yourself out of all that type of drama <laughs> that that happens because of it. The way that we see life in whatever area, in whatever way you see, we see life is predominantly focused on the astral planes, which is, there's no truth to any of it. It's just riddled with illusion. So the information that is coming from these so-called masters, and I'm putting that in quotation marks, I'm not prejudging this book, okay? So I, because I don't know, I haven't read it. But the majority of the books that come my way when people talk about it, and I go do some research, it doesn't take me long to realize that it's not coming from one of these masters. It's coming from the astral planes based on what they're saying and how they're saying it. But, so I tend to stay away from it and focus more on the priorities of Maitreya anyway, you know, and that's why I look at politics because it's so important, you know, economics because it's so important, world affairs because it's so important to know these things. But when you read Benjamin Krem's Master, the articles from this, and I encourage everyone to do this, just read it, look, you know, and kind of think about it for yourself and think about some of the things that he said. And then go read something else coming from a book about these masters or the ascended masters or something. And you can eventually you can start to see a different quality to it. And if the only analogy that I can really use is when it comes to music, for instance, or you painting or whatever, you can do the same thing with this is trying to think of a pop artist, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if you remember the, the group right said Fred with, that came out with this really corny hit. This is one hit. It was, I'm too sexy. I'm too sexy for my car. I'm, you know, whatever it was. It's like taking that song and comparing it with, um, Mozart or Bach or Beethoven. You just can't compare the two. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yes, it is music, you know, and it's fun to hear. And some of those songs like that pop songs are really fun to listen to. I'm not saying no, I listen to those songs all the time, but you can't, but in the end of the day, when I really look at it in terms of music quality, you can't compare the two, right? So the other thing is, and I've, I've quizzed people who have claimed to channel masters on this because I ask them, how long were you trained to be able to do what you do? And they never, oh, I was never trained on that. I, I just knew how to do it. And if you, asked, if you had been able to ask Ben, because he's passed away, unfortunately, he would have told you that he didn't just know how to do it. He had to learn it. And his master taught him for hours upon hours, every single day, upwards of 20 hours a day. He was working with his master moment to moment to try to get to where he could, he could see and, and receive messages back and forth and, and also send messages to him without it being distorted. And it's a, it's a very difficult task to do. And he said even, you know, Krishnamurti, who, who was being trained to be the world teacher, eventually got that plan got scrapped. But he even had to be trained by Maitreya for hours upon hours upon hours just to be able to receive messages from Maitreya. As he even said, and there's no way for me to prove this, but it was even said that Jesus had to be trained in that way. So it's not something, that, and Alice Bailey talked about being trained by her master in that way. So it's not something that just comes automatically. You have to learn it. You have to work at it. You have to see that not every message is 100% accurate. You have to, okay, that's an illusion. That's not true. That's this. And so it's it's a it's a very 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 difficult training that these disciples have to go through in order to be able to receive messages like that. So that's why. But again, it, you know, to me, it's it's that. But it's also um, it has to do with what interests me, and and what interests me more about even this information is about the priorities of Maitreya as it relates to politics, economics the ending of war and all those kind of things where those, most of those books and even articles, even things in Benjamin Krem's books or Alice Bailey books talking about 
the activity of these masters doesn't really pertain much to me. It's nice to know. It's kind of fun to read. But on a, on a day-to-day basis, it doesn't change my life either way. You know what I mean? I'd rather focus on what Maitreya is talking about in terms of teachings that I need to learn for myself to apply to myself. It'd be the same thing as when people read the Bible and they focus so much on the things that really don't matter to their life and change their life for the better. To me, it's far better just to focus on those things and not worry about the other things. Is that true? Did this really ha- I don't really care about all that. I really only want to care about what's pertaining to me and how, what can help me in, in this moment in time. Where you know, I hope it maybe makes sense or not. But anyway, I appreciate the comment nonetheless and the question nonetheless. All right, now um, let's see. Let me switch back from the email to the comment. Uh, Alex Dubois, I'm only going to answer the one about the guidestones. The other ones, I don't know if you're necessarily being serious about. Maybe the Lucifer telescope that you're talking about from the Vatican. I don't know much about any of that, so I'm not going to even talk about it because it doesn't really relate to this information at all. But the Georgia Guidestones, were they a hoax? No, they were there. You know, I mean, I what was written on there, I don't find to have any kind of truth or relevant truth to it. It was just somebody's opinion, you know, about those things. So if you're meaning about that, I think that's basically it. But those Guidestones aren't there anymore. Somebody blew them up. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to see them, even though they're a lot closer than I thought they were. I thought they were... I never looked it up. You know, I just assumed when I read it, they were way south of Atlanta going toward Florida. And I hardly ever go down that way. But they were actually, I'd driven up 85. I think they're up 85 going toward South Carolina. I've driven up that many, t- many times. I could have very easily gotten off the interstate, made a left or a right or whatever it is, and go down a highway and seen them from the road at least. And that would have been about the extent of my interest in them. But um, just so I could say I've seen them, but I guess it's too late now. <laughs> But thank you for that, and nonetheless, I appreciate you commenting. Um, Timothy Tilton, have any of the masters said anything about humanity's awareness of Maitreya reaching critical mass? Um, in terms of awareness of Maitreya's priorities, you know, there's there's a lot to what you're saying for me to talk about. Now, in terms of are they actually aware of Maitreya on TV and know who he is, The it's been a while, so this these numbers aren't, entirely accurate but when Benjamin Krem was alive he said it was somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 million people had heard about this story believed it or didn't believe it showed some interest in it or not didn't matter but that's basically how many have heard about it through mainly the work that Benjamin Krem and his group the Share International group were doing over the years so now in terms of people wanting to see the changes in the world okay it's been said in one of the books uh, that was written by, um, I think it was Helena Roach. It's entitled Leaves of Moria's Garden, if I'm not mistaken. I think this was in this, but if, if it's not in this book, I'm sorry. But it's written in the Ageless Wisdom teaching somewhere. Maitreya actually said um, that there was a time when one true man could save the world. And then there was a time when 10,000 weren't enough. He said, in the coming time, I will call on one billion people. This was written over 100 years ago. And Benjamin Krem was always curious about these things. So he asked his master, has Maitreya gotten his billion people? And this was a few years before he passed away. He said he asked him this question. And his master came back with a very surprising answer. He has one and a half billion people who are wanting to bring about peace, to end hunger, to save the environment, which is from Maitreya's perspective, more than enough people to get the job done. So it doesn't have to be even the majority of the people that want to see change. I think it's going to be this billion and a half-ish people, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, people who are going to be working with these masters in some way, shape, or form, directly, indirectly, or whatever, to, to bring about some of these priorities. There's going to be a vast segment of people probably the same amount. They're going to be totally against what Maitreya is talking about. And then the vast majority of people that's larger than those groups are going to be people who don't know what to do either way or just want to get on with their life and not do anything is the way I kind of see it. But according to Maitreya, a billion and a half is what is needed. So that's already there. And the thing that I've said in previous videos, if you just look closely enough, you can see the priorities of Maitreya starting to work out in groups of people, <clears throat> people marching for peace, people marching in peace in Russia, 
you know, people marching out against injustice in Iran. And, and these are just, when that woman was killed for not wearing her, her, um, their garment around her head properly, because women are protesting having to wear a veil. So they're, they're pushing it back farther and farther, just pushing the envelope. And this one woman was arrested and killed. And it's caused these massive flare-ups in, um, in protests in Iran. You know, and it's also pointed out again the hypocrisy of the United States when they sit there and point their fingers at these other countries and say, "See, you have an injustice in your country," and people are, "Yeah, we got it in this country too." You know what I'm saying? Probably as much or more than they have in those other countries, and yet we point the finger at them like we're not we're perfect. You know, it's just insane. But anyway, but yeah, I mean they're they're marching out against it in that way, and then you got. More and more people every year marching for peace, marching for racial justice, marching for what they consider to be ecological justice, you know, and those kind of things, and standing out against things in their in their own way, in the way that they're doing it. You're, we're starting to see it more and more and more on the right and on the left, you know. And the people who are marching, or not marching per se, but you know, who are standing up for what they call consider freedom are really marching for one of the priorities of Maitreya in their own way, but they've gotten it kind of twisted, turned around and backwards based on the fact and the misinformation that they're following. But the right, especially in this country, is they say it all the time. They're fighting for freedom. They're not, really. The Second Amendment right is not true freedom. True freedom is freedom of thought, being able to be yourself, be true and autonomous in who you are, to live a creative life, to be free of fear of one another in that way, to see that each day is different every single day. And these are just ways of describing freedom from what I see, but it only comes from what Maitreya says, from true justice, where your needs are taken care of. It's the only way you're going to truly be free. So capitalism is not going to bring about freedom. uh, Commercialization is not going to bring about freedom. Communism is not going to bring about freedom in that way. So... We, we have to look at what is true freedom and how to get there. And the only freedom is, you know, to me, peace and freedom are one and the same, really. Trust and freedom and peace are one and the same. You have to be able to trust the world you're living in and not live in total fear to be free. And even if you have all the money in the world, if you're afraid of losing it or afraid of somebody taking it from you or afraid of, you know, whatever, then you're not truly free either. You know, you might be able to get on your own private jet and fly all around the world and in the world of appearances that you might appear to be free, but you're not truly free because you're, you're stuck in fear in your mind. So the masters are here to teach us how to, to live free from fear, which is really true freedom. So hopefully that helps. All right. And then I'm going to swing back to an email that came my way. Um, Lenny, you asked a lot in this, and I'm going to have to say that I was not at all expecting to have to give a book report on any of these. I have not read any of these books that you, you've you asked either. And if you go back and listen to what I had said in the first uh, answer to the first question that came my way, um, I kind of apply it to the same thing. I've put more of my energy, my time and energy into into studying and being up on politics, world affairs, and economics more so than than what people would even consider information pertaining to this. But I relate the political situation, the economic situation, and world events to this information, not the other way around. So, but I apologize. I'm not up on all that stuff. So I, you know, but thank you for bringing it to my attention. Nonetheless, I do want to address your, what you said was your third question. Okay. Which I don't really see a question in there, but we're going to talk about it because I do think it, it something that we can look at because your, your question here has to do with bettering yourself or improving upon your life or whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? And to me, that's more important than, than the extraneous stuff. So anyway, but you said, my third question is I really, I feel like I've been living selfish ways for a long time and only just now realized it. I wish I could get the inspiration, willpower to be a better person and give unselfish love. You inspire me when you talk about how good we have it here in America, then complain when things are taken away. That's true. I have sat idly by while uh, knowing other people are going without. I wish I could pray to God or Maitreya and they would inspire me and or live through me. I feel like I am always depressed and don't want to leave my house. 
but I know that's not how we're supposed to live. All right. Um, so uh, let's talk about that real quick. So the first thing is, I don't think, based on my own personal understanding of, of this, because I'm not perfect at it either, the masters are perfect in terms of the, how they live unselfishly and so forth, But because so I'm still learning it just like everybody else. But what I understand it to be for myself is that you really can't learn how to be a better person, how to be unse- you know, so un- selfless in that way, because that's already who you are. We're souls in incarnation. The problem is, we have been conditioned from the very cradle to look at life totally different than what we really are. That's the problem. So all the conditioning all from society, from our family and friends, from TV or whatever, from reading, from our own just misinterpreting what we're seeing, comes from the false belief and the illusion that we are separate. And Maitreya says he comes to, to rid forever the crime of separation. And the, he says he also he's coming to teach the art of self-realization. But if you listen to Krishnamurti, I would recommend for you, if you really want to look at this, is to go listen to Krishnamurti's videos where he talks about this. But you got to look at it the other way. You can't just st- wake up one day and say, I want to be unselfish. Right? you got to look at what, who is being selfish, and then when you look at it diligently, moment to moment, and, and as Krishnamurti would say, he would say, you've got to be very diligent, very aware, very aware of, of your thoughts and motives and so forth, is you start to see that this is going on and it's just a response. It's not really who you are. You're who's seeing it. But Maitreya says, there's a few things I wanted to talk about in this, is some things that he said and written in books, and one thing, a couple things that he said to me personally that I want to share with you that might help you get started, okay, is what he said that you can read is he said, um, he comes to bring, re, he comes to teach humanity the art of self-realization. And there's three things, the very simple things that he's going to be core to his teachings in this. The, the first one is honesty of mind. He says, we all think one thing, say something else, and do something entirely different. We need all three of those things to line up. It's very difficult to do, but if you, if you practice these three things, they start to become habitual. And you can see the unreality in what you're thinking. You can see the hypocrisy in your own actions and words and so forth. They're there. You can see the selfishness in your intentions, even though you might be saying that they're unselfish. Right? A little side note. People always like to throw this this line from Paul in the Bible where he's back my way, thinking that he was talking about an Antichrist figure when he said, even Satan can, decide, can disguise himself as an angel of light. I always screw it up by saying it. But anyway, that's what he said. Even Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. I think he was talking about selfish intention. That your selfish intention, which is the symbol in the Bible of Satan, was actually not an individual, but the... Uh, um, personification in writing, I guess, or a symbol for our selfish nature. That's what they meant by Satan. And anytime they refer to Satan tempting you or this, that it's your selfish nature, that not a, a fallen angel Lucifer that they like to talk about. But anyway, that's just the ageless wisdom, esoteric view of who and what Satan really was. But anyway, so Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light because you think that what you're doing is selfless when it's actually not. And you have to be very diligent in terms of seeing whether what you're doing, your motives are, are pure or whatever like this. You know, that's the reason why when I would try to impress Benjamin Krem, thinking, not really paying attention, that I, that's what I was trying to do. He would blast me every single time. He would almost mock some of the things that I said from time to time. And it really hurt my feelings. And then I would go back and I would sit and think about it and really be pissed about it. But the farther I get away from it, the more I look, he was teaching me to look at my motives, look at my intentions. He didn't want me to be impressed by him. <laughs> and, and he was a very good teacher in that way. But it, he kicked my ass from time to time in that way too. But anyway, so you have to look at it like that. So honesty of mind, sincerity of spirit uh, is, a, is the second thing. And, and what Maitreya would say is sincerity of spirit is like when you're sitting on a beach 
and you're looking out into the ocean and you forget all about your bank account and you're just kind of in the moment. It also happens when you're serving or you're being creative. You forget all about yourself and you're just kind of there. That's when joy really starts to come in. So depression and things like this are coming from thinking, putting too much focus on the individual self. And when you serve, you start to forget about yourself and you, you lose all sense of depression. That's why it's always, Maitreya would tell you to serve, 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 serve. Find some way to serve in some way. You know what I mean? And then lastly, this is the hard one, is detachment. To really look at your thoughts, look at your motives, look at um, your beliefs. You look at the times that you are depressed, perhaps. And, say, and rather than saying, why am I depressed? Maitreya would say, the better question would be, who is depressed? And when you say, who is depressed or who am I? is the real question. You start to see that those thoughts, those emotions, those feelings are not really who you are. So honesty of mind, sincerity of spirit, and detachment is what Maitreya would say to really start to really practice. And it's practice, just like that. you have to practice, 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 practice. When you get are attached to something or you're not honest or you're hypocritical, don't beat yourself up about it just because you're a person. Get back in the game and, and focus on it again and focus on it again and focus on it again. I was being sincere when I told you that the, the questions that you were asking in the last video, Maitreya at some point, and all these masters, the master Jesus, the master who was Paul, the master who was Peter, had asked themselves those same questions in some way, you know, eons ago. And it took them eons to work, them, to work through all this to, to where they could do it moment to moment perfectly. Now, the things that Maitreya said to me that really helped me, the two things that I want to share with you is, one time when I saw him, he said, peace always starts from within. So don't look to the exterior to give you any sense of peace because it's not. You have to look within, you know. And then the second thing that he said that really impacted my life is he said, I never judge anyone on whether they're good or bad. I only notice the good things that they do. And when I started to apply that to my life and those people in my life who were difficult, I started to see that they were doing some good things here or there and I'd focus on it and I quit being critical of them. But it's a practice. You have to practice it. You have to be, as, as Krishnamurti would say, be very diligent in terms of where you're thinking and why you're thinking and who's thinking in that at that time. And it's not easy. That's the reason why there are not a lot of masters walking around there. There's not a lot of people walking around asking themselves, how do I become more, you know, live, un, uh, how do I live an unselfish life, you know? But none of us are perfect. And we won't be, we won't manifest that perfectly until we're a master. So, you know, give yourself a little bit of, of freedom to be human, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, be diligent about it. And then when you, when, you, when you remind yourself of it, go back and, and try it again. Go back and try it again. But if you go to the Share International site, you can really read some of the basic teachings of Maitreya. And, and, and the one that he says is going to be central to everything that he teaches humanity are those three things. Honesty of mind, sincerity of spirit, and detachment. So hopefully that helps. But I really do appreciate all the questions, everybody. I love you. You guys have a great day. Stay safe out there. Keep joy close and hope even closer. You guys take care. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.